Let's pause for a practice question. Considering typical B-mode pulse echo ultrasound, which of the following intensity numbers will have the lowest value? A, SP, PA, B, SA, TA, C, SP, TP, or D, the above choices would have the same value. You may pause the video to decide your answer. The answer is B, S-A-T-A. -A. Recall that the S-A-T-A -A is averaged over the entire time the probe is applied, not just that is on, and the entire surface of the transducer. This will always be the smallest number. Note that choice C, spatial peak, temporal peak, would be the highest number. If you've played with an ultrasound machine for any length of time, I'm sure you'll notice that you haven't seen any of the alphabet soup we just discussed on your machine. That's because instead of calculating these numbers, we use a variety of derated quantities that give you a clinical approximation of the bio effects that you may see clinically. We have a standard output display format for these numbers that has been agreed upon by the FDA, AIUM, and NEMA. The two quantities we'll be discussing are the thermal index and the mechanical index. These numbers frequently overestimate the possible bioeffects. They're built to be very conservative, and so it's important to consider that when you're using these in your clinical practice. They require no user input, and they'll work with any transducer. They're usually displayed in the upper right or lower left-hand corner of the display on your ultrasound machine. We'll come back to those indices after we discuss the bioeffects themselves. Again, there are two major categories of bioeffects. Thermal effects, which result from the heating of tissue by ultrasound, and mechanical effects, which have to do with the way that the ultrasound causes molecules and particles and cells to move. Again, all of the ultrasound that attenuates into the tissues is eventually converted to heat. Because of that, bioeffects vary depending on how the tissue you're insonifying attenuates. I don't want you to memorize this slide. Rather, I'd like you to be able to come up with things on this slide by applying the physics you've learned earlier in this lecture series. Thermal bioeffects can vary with all of the things pertaining to attenuation. The longer that you insonify tissue, the more ultrasound has attenuated in the tissue. So the longer the duration that you have the ultrasound on, the more likely you are to have thermal bioeffects. The tissue type changes your attenuation as well, and so the more that your tissue attenuates, the more you will have thermal bioeffects. So here bone will have more thermal heating than kidney. Location will change the characteristics of attenuation as well. Recall that as you have the most ultrasound at the surface, you will attenuate and have more ultrasound attenuation and heating at the surface. The other place where you will have a lot of ultrasound attenuation and therefore a lot of heating is at the focal zone, another area of high intensity as we've discussed earlier. And finally a variety of ultrasound parameters can affect thermal bio effects. Let's talk more about those ultrasound parameters. The higher your frequency is, the more tissue attenuation you'll get, and therefore the more heating you'll see. Source dimensions are trickier. For a given power, then increasing the size will spread out the power over the transducer surface, so you'll get less heating and less exposure. However, for a given intensity, which keeps the area in the denominator, a larger size probe will lead to more exposure.
it's not easy to tell whether power or intensity are scaling with the size of the probe we use, which is just another reason why we use the thermal index rather than the intensity to discuss bioeffects. Power, I think, is relatively straightforward. More power, more heating. Pulse repetition frequency, which is, if you'll recall, is how often the ultrasound is pulsing. The increased pulse repetition, more pulses equals more exposure equals more heating. Pulse duration works the same way. The longer the pulse is, the more exposure you get. And finally, the scan mode you're in really affects the amount of bioeffects you can get. If you're in a scanning mode, such as B mode, you will have relatively low exposure compared to power Doppler or spectral Doppler, which involve large amounts of ultrasound going into a small area, the area that you're checking out with Doppler specifically. Finally, let's discuss two tissue properties. Absorption or acoustic impedance and perfusion. Absorption or acoustic impedance is discussing whether this tissue is bone or kidney. The more acoustic impedance it has, the more it'll absorb. And finally, perfusion. Perfusion is the blood supply. The more blood you have washing into an organ, the more heat it will be able to wash out. It's kind of like air conditioning for the cells that you're using ultrasound on. But there's a limit to how much perfusion can take away. What's the limit? Well, according to fetal studies, and the fetus is the most sensitive area where we would be applying thermal bioeffects, so long as you keep the local heating below 2 degrees, you will have no bioeffects. If you go above 2 degrees, the amount of bioeffects you'll have will depend on the time exposure. So let's return to thermal index. Thermal index is usually given for three different tissues. Why? Because as we discussed, the type of tissue you're in plays a very significant role in how much attenuation and therefore how much heating you will have. It's usually given for TIS, that's the thermal index for soft tissue throughout your field. This is the relevant parameter if you were, for example, doing a fast scan. There's TIB, which is the thermal index for bone at the surface. This is usually the relevant value for fetal imaging when you're doing things like calculating age based on femur length or head circumference or by pyramidal diameter. Finally, TIC is the thermal index for bone in the very near field. This is relevant in cranial imaging, which is not really very important in emergency medicine practice. Let's pause for a practice question. If the temperature increase is not greater than blank, there will be no thermal effects, regardless of the exposure time. You may pause the video to decide on your answer. The answer is 2 degrees, so long as you avoid a temperature increase of 2 degrees, you will not have to worry about any thermal effects, regardless of exposure time.